probably the most confusing part about bike technology nowadays is the carbon. You know, when the consumer hears high modulus carbon, aerospace grade materials, you know, it becomes very confusing and everybody has different words for basically the same materials and things like that. So, to start with aerospace grade material, the thing is, the aerospace industry uses the same carbon as the bike industry and other sporting goods industries. The only difference is that when you buy it as an aerospace company, you get a lot of paperwork with it that shows where the material has been at all times, who was working on it, what the temperatures were used in the ovens, things like that. And, you know, that's just not something that's useful for the sporting goods industry. And the flip side is also that that material is five times more expensive because of all the paperwork. So nobody in the bike industry is using aerospace grade material or flipped around, everybody is really using it, but nobody's paying the extra for the paperwork. When it comes to high modulus carbon, there are some other problems. Like high modulus means high stiffness, but it also means very brittle. So you can imagine that when you have a frame that's 100% high modulus, potentially it could be stiff, but it's also very brittle, so you don't want that. What you want is when you have the 400 pieces of carbon, that for each piece you choose the right type of material. So maybe here on the sides of the down tube, where we have a lot of material far away from the center that can really do a lot for stiffness, that's where we use high modulus material. Because there, there's not a lot of impact, not a lot of other things that the material has to do other than withstand those bending forces. So there we use high modulus, but we wouldn't use high modulus in the head tube area because there, with this impact, you don't want the brittleness of high modulus. So the key is not to use high modulus everywhere, it's to use the right grade of material. Now luckily, a lot of these companies that claim 100% high modulus carbon, obviously they're the ones that don't really know a lot about carbon, because you wouldn't use 100% of the same material, but also they don't really know what high modulus means. So most of those companies, when you actually look at the spec of the material they use, it's not what a carbon engineer would call high modulus, it's medium or even low modulus in some cases, which actually ironically makes the frame better, because at least it's a safe frame, it doesn't have that brittleness, but of course also that explains why a high modulus claimed frame often isn't very light. And that's something to keep in mind. In the end, the grade and the modulus of the material is just a tool. What you actually want to achieve is a certain weight, and a certain stiffness, and a certain strength. So if you achieve a super, super light frame that's very stiff and very strong, and you don't use any high modulus carbon, that's better than using all the high modulus carbon in the world and having a frame that's heavy and not so stiff and not very strong. So in the end, it's not about the material, it's what the engineer does with it. And so the numbers speak for themselves. When we have a frame that has some high modulus there where we need it, it has medium modulus and under spots, and we achieve a frame that's less than 900 grams, has some of the best torsion and bottom bracket stiffnesses in the world, even compared to frames that weigh 50 or 100% more. And that's the true sign of good carbon engineering that combination, not the claim on what the grade of carbon is.